Hey everybody, and welcome to another edition of NBC One on One uh, here on NBCSports.com. Uh, today we're joined by uh, this week's Missouri Valley Conference Women's Basketball Newcomer of the Week, uh, Bill Keese Abdul Kadir. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm doing good. It's great to talk to you. And first of all, congratulations on being named Newcomer of the Week. Uh, what what this is the second time for you, obviously this season. What's that uh, that accomplishment feel like for you so far? Uh, it's a great feeling. Actually, this is my own. This is my second time actually getting an accolade. Um, and uh, this is it's just exciting, you know, just for me to be able to help my team out this season and me being a senior. So this is my last go around. I'm just trying to give it all I got. And uh, right now, these mean a lot, but winning a championship will mean a lot more. Absolutely. I know that's one of the Indiana State team goals this year. You guys obviously off to a great start, fantastic start for the team undefeated in conference play. Uh, but about your team, you guys have obviously had a great start. Uh, how has it been getting adjusted to this new program for you? And what have you learned from some of the players like Anna Munn uh, on what it's like to be on the, on the Indian State women's basketball team? Uh, it's, it was kind of different when I first got here because everything I learned at my last uh, school was like completely opposite. So it took, a, it took a while for me to, you know, catch on, but not too long. And uh, just the fact that the whole team was basically new. So the coaches had to reteach everything over. So we kind of had to, you know, fall back some. And I would say, you know, everybody's now on the same page. And I think that's why, you know, we're 5-0 right now. And uh, I'd like to say in a month, I've never had like a senior or had a leader on the team like Anna. You know, she gives all she has all the time. And uh, it might not look like it's too vocal, but believe me, she says a lot and has a lot to say. And I, and I like her for that. Sure, she is. She's obviously been one of the leaders of the team and named to the preseason conference team, obviously, for the women's basketball Um the learning curve for you, for going to the program, going from coming from Memphis to Indiana State, quickly adapted. Was it easy for you to to make the adjustment to Indiana State? I would definitely say that. You know, I've been I played you know Division One basketball for the last three years, so it's not really that different. Uh, all you really need is effort and energy, and everything else will follow suit. So I felt like that's why it was it was pretty easy for me to adjust. Sure, absolutely. Now, uh, you've obviously had a, a great uh, background. Uh, accomplished lots of accomplishments in high school. We find out uh, breaking Rebecca, Rebecca Lobo's career scoring record in high school. Talk about what, where you came from, uh, how you were able just to catch so many people's eyes at, at playing at that level, and just what it was like uh, how you, you know, just sort of got into the game when you were growing up. Oh, well, I started playing when I was about three or four years old at like YMCA type leagues, and uh, all of my brothers and sisters played basketball. So it was like, it, I was going to end up playing. And um, I just, you know, just fell in love with the game. And then high school came around and I was actually homeschooled all the way up until eighth grade. And at my school, you know, we could play high school basketball as eighth grade. It was six through 12. So um, I just started playing and people were unaware, you know, just to think that Springfield, Massachusetts is the home place of basketball. You would get a lot of a lot of exposure, but we really don't. And so I think AAU really helped me out to get my name out. And then people found out about me being the first Muslim basketball player to cover and play. And I think that's what really grabbed people's eyes. I really don't think it was about the score and all the points. Now, you mentioned that, though, but obviously I, we saw you play when we had you on the MC TV network a few weeks ago. Athleticism, you know, you're, you're definitely one of, the, one of the better players in the league. But do you think that your your religion played a part in, in you getting more retention, or do you credit? Do you still give some of the credit to just your pure basketball ability? Uh, I, okay, yeah, I definitely give some credit to my talent as well. But um, you know, like I said, it took a lot of practice, of course, to to be you know as fast as I may be, or whatever the case may be. But I really do think people are really look at me, give me a second look because of the way I'm dressed, sure. and then me being able to play like how I play kind of adds on. Yeah, well, notwithstanding, obviously, you, you guys have had an outstanding season, as we said, and, you know, make no mistake about it, you guys have had a, a great season. Uh, now, back in 2009, I learned that you were invited to the White House to have dinner with President Obama. What was that experience like? First, I thought it was fake. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. My mom, my mom got the invite, uh, the invitation, and I was in Memphis, of course, and she was back home. And she's like, I got this weird letter from the, the White House. I don't know what it's about. And so I'm like, well, just, you know, it's probably one of those letters that they just send to everybody. Just throw it out. She said, no, I think you should call the number. So I ended up calling the RSVP number. 
and it was real. And I was like, okay, so this is real. And um, I ended up flying out and I literally ate dinner right next to him. Like when I first walked in, they told me I had the luckiest seat of the house. And I'm like, what does that mean? So when they, show, you know, they brought me to my seat, it was my name card. And then it had the president's name card right next to mine. I said, this can't be real life. But uh, he was so laid back. You would not think he was running the U.S. And, you know, it was, we ate dinner, we laughed, and he actually offered to play me one-on-one. -on -one. He's like, you know, if you ever come back to D.C., you got to let, let somebody know, and they'll contact me, and, and we can play one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> nice. Now, okay, I want to take a step back. You said you had an RSVP, and you called the number. When you called the number, who picked up? What was, what was the conversation like? It had to be just somebody in the office. And when she said, um, you know, did you get an invitation in the mail? And I'm like, yeah, I did. And I said, is this, you know, is this real? And she said, she kind of chuckled. She said, yeah, this is real. <laughs> and then from that point, just travel arrangements, get yeah. there. And when you showed up, like, what was that experience? You, you they actually, were you ushered in somewhere? What was yeah, that process actually, like? It just felt like there was a lot of black trucks, like where we were, of course. And it was kind of like going through airport security security and they, you know, they checked us, but just to be inside the white house, it was like, this seems like it really looks exactly how it is on the move, like on movies yeah. or on TV. Yeah. Good story. Good story. Now I want to finish up here. As we know, you said one of your, the team goals is a championship. You guys making it, you know, winning the conference regular season or conference tournament, but individually now that you've, you've played, uh, finishing up your college career now at Indiana state, Personally, your individual goals, is it, you know, striving for, you know, some personal personal record, personal goal, team championship? What are just some of the things that you're looking for as you finish up uh, playing at the collegiate level? Um, I would have to say just to be able to, to play, you know, like myself. You know, again, in high school, you said I averaged all these points and everything. I just kind of felt like I was kind of um, – my game didn't grow as much as I wanted it to these past couple of years in college. And I feel like here, you know, I I can I'm finding myself again on the court. I'm confident in what I do, and uh, the coaches, you know, the the coaches here, they they give you all the support you need to feel that way. And uh, really, you know, I just kind of want to put my name out there and hopefully, you know, get some pro some pro looks and stuff like that. So you know, really, my overall is just just get a chance to play for a ring. I just want a chance to play at it, and the rest will probably go ahead and we'll see what the future is like after this. Playing overseas, playing at, at the next level, that an, another individual goal of yours as well? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I'm not ready to give it up until these knees give out. Then <laughs> when I'll say I'm done. <laughs> All right. Well, obviously wish you guys the best luck. You're off to a great start and we'll see what happens along the way. Um, Definitely everyone, all the teams will be at the uh, Missouri Valley Conference Women's Basketball Tournament where tickets are available for fans uh, March 13th through 16th in St. Charles. Bukis, appreciate your time today, and, and it's been a pleasure. Thanks you, thank you for the time. Thank you.